Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and happy new year to you all as well. It's now 2018, a new year on the channel. Uh, once again, as I said at the end of my last video, which was a stream, thank you all so much for the support you gave me and the channel throughout the year of 2017. It was a massive year. We started on uh, 2,000 subscribers and we made it all the way almost to 10k, so we had a fantastic year. So once again, I just need to say thank you all very much. I mean that um, as honestly and as... Uh, what's the word? What's the word? Appreciatively. That's not a word, is it? I don't know. But I, I, honestly, I'm just chuffed. I'm chuffed at the support we got through 2017. And let's hope that continues going through the year of 2018. Wherever the content goes, wherever we go, in what direction with the channel, I will just try my best to keep up the best content that I possibly can with the equipment and the time that I've got. And hopefully throughout the year that improves and there's more time, there's better equipment. And that means I can upgrade the content make better things for you and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have a good time and we'll keep we'll keep growing and hopefully this could become even bigger uh, together not just me but you guys because you guys have such a big input in the channel so once again um thank you uh, so today we are going to be talking celtic transfer celtic transfer talk if you like january geez oh with everything that you're passing on facebook twitter anywhere on the fucking internet you'd honestly think this is the summer transfer window i seem it seems like there is more to talk about. There's been more spoke about for ins and outs right now than there was at the start of the season, where you expect most of the business to be done. Um, you expect it all to be done kind of in the summer, and then maybe January, just a couple of players leaving, maybe tweak up a couple of areas. But no, this is a this has been a heavily talked about transfer window for Celtic on both ends um, of the, the you know the platform, the coming off part, the going away platform, the part and, and arriving. Um, it really has been a heavily discussed transfer window with lots of things to speak about. So players leaving, you know, there's a max exodus, a mass exodus. Sorry, max, max. Ex I can't talk. Uh, what is fucking wrong today? Ma <laughs> Aggie up. Mass exodus on the horizon by the looks and sounds of things. Brendan Rodgers has al already and himself has called this transfer window a revolving door. We've probably all heard that by now. Brendan Rodgers, after the old firm game on Saturday, the 0-0 draw, he came out and said the press conference, this transfer window is going to be a revolving door. In, out. A lot of players are probably going to be leaving, players who have not been cutting their weight, players that he just doesn't see the worth in anymore, that don't add anything to the team. And he's obviously wanting to improve and build our team, heading into, you know, big matches, heading forward as a European team and not just a domestic team. Brendan Rodgers, you know, has a vision for Celtic. He wants to take us and make us bigger uh, than what we are at the current minute. Obviously, Celtic are a massive club. We are a massive, massive club. One of the biggest in the world for reputation such wise. But we just don't have that platform as teams do in England and such to, to, to you know, replicate that that uh, that stature on the pitch. We just don't have the funds, we don't have the platform to do so, we don't have the television time, we don't have the money to make that reputation very much apparent on the park. But Brendan Rodgers has got the, the, the vision in his head to try and make that bigger, try and make Celtic bigger and better as much as possible and it looks as though he's going to try and do as much as that in this January transfer window. Um, outs, well, where do we start? I think I think a lot of fans are wanting to see some players leave and we're just expecting to see players leave. Let's talk about the outs before we talk about the ins, just discussing about this, this January transfer window. So, on the outs, it looks almost certain, first off, Eric Sviatchenko will be leaving the club. In my eyes, I think this is a poor decision. Uh, I think the Celtic support are very spot on this. There's a lot of people who are on the same side as me and a lot of people on the opposite side of me. A lot of people saying, I just get rid of him, sell him, take the money. Uh, he's, he struggles to be fit, even when he is fit, he doesn't look too good. But I completely disagree. I honestly think when he is fit, he is arguably the best centre-back at the club. I think he's a very good player, very calm player. And I feel like we could get a lot more out of him. He's not had a lot of chances, especially under Brendan Rodgers, to really prove his worth, especially with injury problems. And even when he was given the chances, I don't see anything wrong with him. I don't think he done anything that merits him to be sold. Obviously, Brendan Rodgers just doesn't really like him. He doesn't fit Brendan Rodgers' plans, his system. And obviously, just wants to get rid of him. But I feel really bad for the guy because I think, honestly, if you give him the chance, he's far better than Dedrick Boyata. He's just as good as Jozo Semenovic. Maybe Christopher Ayer is coming to the point now where he's shown his true worth. And maybe uh, over the next few months, Christopher Ayer will be our best centre-back at the club. But 
I think Eric Sviatchenko has been very hard done by. I feel like he deserves more chances. I want to see him get back into the team because I'm a big fan of him. I really do like him. I think he has got true qualities that we really need because our defence is the weakest point in our team. There's no question about that. So I don't see why we're getting rid of him. I mean, at the end of the day, if we get rid of him and we're bringing in better players, if we're bringing in players who are going to be experienced, who are going to be decent at the European standards for Europa Champions League, then maybe it'll be a little less, you know, kind of harming to this scenario we've currently got. But look, at the start of the season... We saw the scenario we were in where we had no fit centre-backs. And now we're just going to go off and sell Svetchenko. Uh, we were in real problems at the start of the season. Uh, obviously, Svetchenko was one of those injured players. But we were in a scenario where we were playing Beaton uh, and fucking Ayer at some point, I'm sure. Be Beaton and Ayer was the centre-half partnership. And this was way before Ayer had really got a chance to transform himself into a centre-half. Um, so it was a very, very risky and very, very weak uh, partnership we had. And now we're getting rid of the depth that we have at the club. I just don't understand it too much. I would like to see us obviously bring in players, which we'll talk about. But I don't feel like the right way to go is by selling Eric Svetchenko. If we were to sell anyone, I think it should be Dedrick Boyata. But obviously, Brendan Rodgers has plans to let Svetchenko go. He's been very open about that. And Svetchenko's been very open about that. And it looks as though we're going to be bringing in about £2 million, £1.5 million. Pounds, which also I don't like about it because I feel like we... He was a player who we brought in for a similar amount of money, I think it was like 1.2 million, 1.5 million pounds, who came in, had a great deal of potential discussed about him, uh, and we could have easily sold him uh, for a bit more money, maybe to a team down south, even Swansea are talking about getting him in, I feel like we're really losing out on what you know we could have made a lot of profit on if he was given the chance, which he's just not getting. The other big out that obviously everyone talking about is Moussa Dembele. Will he go? Will he stay? I mean, more than likely, he will go. I was listening to Super Scoreboard today and they were talking about apparently he is staying. Uh, it's really just a guessing game now with Moussa Dembele. We're just waiting for the news to break that a bid has been made. But obviously, big teams are interested. When I say big teams, I mean Premier League because at the end of the day, we're a bigger club than Brighton, but Brighton have that attraction of playing in the Premier League where obviously if he's getting the wages and he's getting the Premier League football, he's probably probably going to take the move, I'd be gutted to see him go, quite obviously, I've obviously discussed my uh, admiration for Mr Dembele on the channel many, many times, he's by far the best striker at the club, I think, and I think a great deal of fans don't respect what Mr Dembele does bring, I think a lot of people misunderstand him uh, and take him for granted very easily, because after they scored three into Rangers, they scored two into Man City, I can guarantee basically every fan was calling him this, that, and the next thing, saying he was the greatest thing since sliced bread. But there's a great deal of the support now who are deciding to give him shit, saying he's not actually that good, uh, like, let's just get rid of him and take the money. I think there is really a lack of appreciation at some points from fans, but obviously people are allowed to have their opinion. My opinion is he's by far and miles better than Lee Griffiths. Far, there's a reason that Premier League teams want Moussa Dembele and not one person wants to scout Lee Griffiths. I mean, there probably is clubs who are scouting Lee Griffiths, right? Let's be honest. But there's a reason, you know, Mr. Demele has been talked about going to the Premier League and Lee Griffiths isn't. Mr. Demele is the better striker. There's no doubt in my mind about it. And I'm not saying that in a way that I don't like Lee Griffiths. I do like Lee Griffiths. I really like Lee Griff Griffiths. He's been a fantastic servant to Celtic over the past few seasons and scored some important, big and many goals. Uh, I do really like him. But Mr. Demele is just plain, plainly better. He is. In my mind, he is. And I think it's quite evident by the way that these transfer talks are going. So Mr. Dembele could be bringing a lot of money into the club, which is good to see. Obviously, this money needs to be spent because the big thing that I passed today, and I, I don't know if it has any, you know, sort of, you know, truth to it or anything, but apparently Brendan Rodgers is planning on just getting rid of a lot of players. We're talking above five here, at least five first team players. The likes of Stuart Armstrong have been talked about, even I've seen Tom Rogic being spoken about, even I've been seeing a lot of players who I did not expect to be linked with moves out of the club being spoken about actually leaving the club. But they're the two players I want to talk about the most, Svetchenko and Dembele. There's all these players that have been thrown in their names that you hear getting shouted, Simunovic is getting linked with Burnley again. There are a lot of potential outs apparently coming on the way. And the big one I pass is apparently Brendan Rodgers is ready. They've got seven million from Van Dyke, the players he wants to sell. Apparently Apparently he's ready and waiting for a £40 million makeover. I saw that in an article. I don't know if it has any truth to it. If you ask me, it's a lot of bollocks. Right? I do not think Celtic are ready to go and spend... Obviously, if we make the £40 million, then the £40 million is there to spend. But are Celtic really going to get rid of the, that many players and spend £40 million? I don't know. I feel like that's a big risk. You're disrupting chemistry from a team who just went invincible last season, uh, who have been phenomenal under Brendan Rodgers. I don't know if it has any truth to it. You've got to take everything with a pinch of salt. But if this is true, this whole revolving door, then potentially we there's six new faces. That was the quote of the article. Six new faces ready to come into the club. 
that is big changes for Celtic and Brendan Rodgers as I said has this vision is it true God knows um, but it does make things a lot more interesting and it, it, it's really going to be a, a, a my, my PC's went fucking black it's really going to be an interesting time so on the ins on the ins it's a very very weird bunch of ins as well because it's, there's a lot of players in there who you know don't necessarily add a lot of first team quality in the sense that are going to help us European game wise and even you know players who aren't exactly going to come in and play in the first team week one we're talking the likes of Lewis Morgan from St Mirren who looks cracking not going to lie looks like a good player but is he the type of player that we expected to be signing if we want to progress in Europa League not necessarily I'm not saying it's a bad signing um necessarily I still think he'll be a good player especially moving forward but it's just not what I expected same we're getting linked with Hendry from Dundee these are two ends I was very surprised to hear about obviously Brendan Rodgers likes the look of them the scouts like the look of them they'll have something special in them I just wasn't expecting to sign them I've not got a problem with saying them because they're not exactly massive fees we're talking here I mean this Hendry uh, for, for Dundee we're talking like 600 grand and if he's going to have the potential that Brendan Rodgers sees and I'm sure 600 grand will be a bargain so we're looking at Hendry we're looking at uh, um, Morgan, those two look as though they may be arriving. John McGinn is also getting spoke about today. I think it was the Hibs chairman has apparently, once again, another apparently came out and said he's ready to listen to offers um, for John McGinn. But the likes of West Ham are interested. Celtic have been like heavily linked with him for the past, you know, six months in the summer as well. A player who I'm dying to see come to Celtic. I think he would be great. I think he's a player who will add a lot of quality to the first team. Maybe not as effective in Europe, such when it comes to his first, you know, sort of few months at the club, first season. But he's a player who I, I, I'm very confident will have going forward, and I know domestically will be fantastic. He looks great with Hibs, uh, around the, those Hibs players supporting them. So put him in the place where he has much better players supporting him and playing around him. Surely he's going to come good. I think he'll be a fantastic player, the sort of player that I would love to see in the Celtic shot. I'm looking forward to signing him if we do, but obviously there is competition for him. I mean, West Ham are talking about signing him. But hopefully he looks at Celtic as a chance, a place to go work with a fantastic manager. Not to say David Moyes isn't a good manager, but personally I'd rather be managed by Brendan Rodgers. Hopefully he sees the European football aspect of things and the guaranteed, you know, kind of game time. Um, he will get game time. There's no doubt about that at Celtic. He will. Maybe it's not going to be week in, week out, 90 minutes. But, I mean, how is he going to compete with a lot of those players at West Ham? The likelihood is he's going to end up out on loan. Um, and I feel like for Celtic, he's definitely got... A, although we have got quite a congested area of the park with those central midfielders. I've got Armstrong, I've got Abue, we've got Ncham. I'm sitting pressing my space ball at Mad here. Um, we've got all these players, but McGinn is definitely a player who would not be, you know, not seen. He's going to get game time. And I feel like he's going to get a lot more at Celtic than with the likes of West Ham. So McGinn has been spoke about as well. We've obviously signed Marvin Comper. Uh, and there's just a few more players apparently uh, ready to come in. We have money. We need to spend money. We want to improve. There are players who have been lacking and not pulling their weight. And it's ready to just cut the dead weight, I would say. It is time and ready to move on. The likes of Olivier Cham has showed he's going to be better than Armstrong, I think. Armstrong, a player who I do love. I love Armstrong, but he's just not been the same this season. There's something gone in him. That, that fire, that desire inside him has went out. Uh, and, and Cham has stepped in and showed his true qualities over the past few months. And uh, I think he's ready to go and take Armstrong's place. And there's a lot of room and a lot of money there for us to go and do that for a lot of areas of the park and just let us improve going forward, which I'm looking forward to seeing. Um, aye, mass exodus perhaps on the cards and a mass intake perhaps on the card only time will tell what rumours will come true I don't know everything you know you can't really trust anything in the year 2017 one source will come from anywhere and uh, and claim something and it will spread like wildfire and there will be no truth to it whatsoever so you've got to take everything from a pinch of salt I'm just giving my opinions to these rumours and uh, letting you know of them um, so I will see what happens over the next couple of weeks. More information will break and I'm sure more things will be coming concrete. And uh, we'll see what it's like then. So if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Let me know your opinions, your thoughts of this January transfer window. I'll see you all next time.